In today's video, we are painting watercolor flowers because, duh, I really like flowers. <laughs> I'll show you step by step how to create this exact floral piece. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Welcome back friends, my name is Shada. In today's video, I'm tackling something that is often requested. I'm going to show you exactly how I approach a watercolor floral painting step by step. I'm trying to go into detail and not leave anything out. So let's start with our supplies. Today I'm working on hot pressed paper, 140 pound, nice smooth texture. Uh, this is on a block, which means all the pages are glued together. So the paper is stretched for you. This is what it looks like when it's new, arches hot pressed. You stick a knife in there and you take that first sheet off, peel it carefully. And that's how you actually remove each sheet once your painting is done. Um, in addition to my paper, I am using a number three sable hair pointed round brush. I'll use that for the whole painting. Uh, and then I have my Muno watercolor 48 pan set. It's a great color selection and it's also good quality paint at a really good price. All the supplies are linked in the video description if you're interested. Now I'm going to talk a little as well about what colors we're going to mix up. I'm starting with a burgundy so I've got this very dark pink mixing in lots of water and then I've also mixed in a bit of burnt orange to warm it up and then I'll mix in some brown and I just like mixing brown into my pinks and purples to darken them and to mute them slightly. And speaking of purple, I'm also going to mix up a really dark burgundy purpley tone. So I've got dark purple, then I'm mixing in uh, that dark pink to warm it up a little bit. The purple is quite cool, so we want to warm it up. And if you still feel like you have a lot of questions about color mixing, about the supplies, you can check out my watercolor e-course. There's a link in the video description. It's sold through my website. Uh, it's over 25 videos and there's no time limit, so You can enjoy it at your own pace. Uh, I'm going to mix a yellow as well. And I like to use these yellow ochre tones. Uh, there's all these other yellows in the palette. I steer clear of them and I'm using these three right here. Um, and I just find that helps me get a nice natural yellow that's a little bit mustardy and a little muted. If you just have a like a lemon yellow or cadmium yellow, you can always mix in um, a bit of brown or a lot of brown. And what you see me doing here is just mixing up a few different shades of oranges and yellows. Uh, those colors I'll use for the center of the flowers. Okay, so let's move over to our painting. We start with the center. You're just going to lay down a circle of water. Then come over here and pick up some of that yellow. And you're going to release a bit of that pigment into the wet area, the wet circle that you've just done. Maybe move it around a bit, then come back over here and with a clean brush, pick up that purple. And then you'll use the purple and just the tip of that pointed round brush to do these thin little semicircle or curving lines surrounding the circle in the center. And those lines, you'll just add a bit more pressure to that round brush, drag it across the page, let those semi circles or curving lines get just ever so slightly larger. Then come over here and mix a bit more water into that purple, lighten it up a little bit. And with that lighter, more watery purple, come back and continue those curving lines, adding extra pressure to the brush to make the lines a little larger. And that's how you make the first flower. It's this messy circle with some negative space in there. Let's do another one together. We start with a wet circular area, release a little pigment into that area, and then maybe you mess it about a bit. Uh, then you're coming in with your darker color. For this one, I'm using the, uh, the first color we mixed up and you're using the tip of the brush to do those curving lines. Then you begin to add more pressure and you just 
let a little bit more of that round brush hit the page. There we go, the belly drags across the page and this sort of messy curving line appears. It could be a semicircle. it could just be one little thin line. You wanna leave some negative space between the brush strokes. You can see some page showing through and that gives the impression of lots of petals. We're painting these loose ranunculus flowers. Maybe let a little more pigment out into the wet area and that's how those flowers begin. Okay, and I'm gonna sneak a little giveaway in here. Today we have some metallic markers, some brush markers from Micador, and a little notebook with cover design by me. To win, all you have to do is make sure you are subscribed, and then comment below and let me know where are you watching from. I love to see where in the world you are. For our third flower, I'm mixing up a really light pink. I begin by uh, mixing white with a lot of water, and then I will grab just a hint of pink or red, and I'll start to mix that in. You just need the tiniest little bit of darker pigment. Uh, you might also pick up a little bit of peach or orange, but just keep it very, very light with lots and lots of water mixed in as well. And we'll come over here. And for this flower, we're going to do an open four petal flower, kind of like a poppy or something. And you just drag that belly of the brush across the page in order to create these shapes of petals. So you can see me just dragging that brush out and allow those petal shapes to emerge naturally. Then allow those petals to dry for a moment and then you're gonna take this burnt orange or brown color and just release a few dots into the center of the flower. Okay, so now we've completed the basis for the entire piece. Three flowers in the center that form a triangle. Now all we need to do is add some smaller flowers and leaves. Uh, and so I'm mixing up a really light gray and I'm going to do some white flowers. For this, I've mixed gray and white, lots of water. You could add just a touch of blue or purple to darken it slightly or even black. And then we'll come over here and up in the upper part of this triangle of flowers, we wanna tuck one or two smaller flowers. And I am painting this by simply painting three large petals and they're sort of all tucked in there, tight close to the other flowers. And then the front petal you barely see, it's like one brush stroke. Uh, and then I'll do a really tiny four petal flower. And with the gray, I'm basically just doing the outlines of petals, little extra pigment at the center of the flower. You wanna leave lots of page, lots of white space showing through on each petal. Now we're going to mix up a little green to do some of the leaves. I start with this really dark, uh, cool green. I'm just, that's one color out of the palette. I mix it with water and then I like to mix a bit of purple in. Purple really darkens green. Um, I might even mix in a bit of dark blue gray, add a bit more green and you can see I've got this fantastic, really dark, cool green. And then to complement it, I'm mixing up a bit of a warmer green. Um, so just a, a natural natural green with a little bit of brown in it. And those two colors look nice together. Now, before I jump in and start painting, it's not a bad idea to just put some little penciled lines where your leaves are going to sit so that you don't kind of surprise yourself or get off the rails. And now I'll take that dark minty green and I am going to paint some leaves. And just like the petals and all of the loose watercolor floral shapes that we do, you're just dragging that belly of the brush across the page. Use the tip of the brush to help you refine the shape. Add a little stem, you know, add a little point to the leaf or a little extra pigment. But for the most part, you're just dragging that brush across the page and whatever shape emerges, it's like, just go with it. <laughs> Watercolors are best left alone. You don't want to overwork them or work them too much. So practice adding a bit of extra pressure to that brush to create a leaf shape and then just back away from the painting. <laughs> I'm using my warmer green up top here and uh, yeah, I'm just following my pencil lines, kind of adding leaves of different sizes and different shades of green all around the flowers. So we're sort of bordering these flowers with some large green leaves. 
I'm adding a few more up top and all of the leaves at the top of the floral motif are facing up towards the top of the page and the ones below go down towards the bottom of the paper. Um, and then one last thing that I'll do is add a little extra water to some of the green so that some of the leaves are really light and transparent. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take a little of that yellow ochre and I'm going to add some detail to the center of the ranunculus flowers, just some loose um, circular shapes there for the stamen. And then I'm coming back in with the burgundy and purple colors and I'm adding some more sort of broken, curving lines just to add a little more detail to those flowers. Uh, so you can see me adding that darker color here, just a little bit of a messy, messy watery circles. Uh, and then some thin, darker lines to give the look of layers and layers of petals. And just as we did before, you can let those lines get a little larger, um, add a little more water, make it a little messy, blend some different shades of purple together. And for the light pink flower, what we'll do is just do some really thin light pink or dark pink brush strokes and maybe a bit more pigment at the center. And then we're going to do the same sort of thing for the white flowers on the tip of your brush. Take that light gray and just add a few sketchy lines, a little more shading at the center of the flower. Uh, with a white flower, you're basically painting the shading, the shadow and the texture. And if you do that, your white flower will just jump right off the page. You can use a little dark green on the tip of your brush to give some detail to those leaves. That's totally optional. And then at this point, our floral painting is almost done. I would say the last step is simply to add a few smaller leaves. If you feel like there's some spaces in this piece uh, that need filling in, pick a color, a brown, maybe a purple, something that goes with the color palette but is something you haven't used a lot of yet and just place some tiny leaves. If you need to flip the painting upside down to make it easier, I always like to pull the brush towards my body. Go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much it. This painting is quickly coming to a close. If there's anywhere where you feel like you just need a little more detail, of course, go ahead and add, add that. But for me, this one is all done. I really had fun with this simple floral. It begins with those first three big flowers. And then from there, you're just having fun adding tiny flowers and leaves. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you'll hit the subscribe button. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring our video today. You know, we live in such an interesting time if you're an artist or creative, the web and social media has really made it possible for you to turn your hobby into a job. And all you really need to do that is a website. Present your work to the world using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. I took a crack at making a site. This is the template I chose. I liked the large format photos and the simple layout. And voila, here is the site that I created. I input my own photos, changed up the colors a little bit, and it took about 25 minutes. It was really easy to use. And you could actually create your own shop on Squarespace. As an artist, that's important. You need to be able to sell your work and process payments, and Squarespace makes that easy as well. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Campbell to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.